All right, guys, it's Sunday night service. It's Sunday night, November the 11th, 2018. And Dr. Motley is not here again. I just got a big old text message from him. He's apologizing. He, I think he was in, um, whoops, okay. I think he was in um, Arizona this weekend and he's actually gonna be out next weekend as well. So I told him, I said, it's been since September since you've been here, I've been having to do this by myself. But anyway, I'm going to trust the process. Look here, trust the process. Do you see that? I just got back Thursday evening from on-site. If you know, hey Barbara, if you, as you guys get logged on, hit your like buttons, hit your heart buttons, and also tell me, have you been to on-site? Do you know about on-site? Do you know anybody who's been to on-site? I was so blessed to be able to spend six nights there in their living centered program. And we're gonna talk about it tonight. It's hard, you know, when you talk about, so it's been really emotional uh, for me thinking about this. And I felt your prayers during this. Nobody really knew. A few people knew that I was, of course, the office had to know, but um, a few people knew that I was going. But if you don't know what on, on site is, um, they are really known as the leader. Literally, I think it's been like 30 something years um, in the leader in therapeutic and personal growth workshops. And we're going to talk about those. Their primary goal is to help each guest reach their full potential of emotional freedom. And I can tell you right now, um, that's exactly what it did for me. You know, it's really interesting. I had a lot, a lot of people say, well, well, what's wrong with you? You know, you don't need to go there. Well, you, when you get, yeah, yeah I, you know, you all know this side of me. You don't know the drama or the Trump, well, Trump drama for darn sure, but the trauma that happened in my life and, and everyone has trauma. It just depends on what degrees, you know, that you have, but Sharon Cruz, she started on site. She was, she's an expert or is an expert in experiential therapy. And I did not know what experiential therapy was until this week. And let me tell you, it rocked me to the core. She founded on site in 1978. Her approach to healing emotional pain became the foundation for the spectrum of programs that on site offers today. And there are many programs that we're actually going to talk about tonight. Miles Adcox, who owns Onsite now, he's the CEO and the owner of Onsite. He and I have known each other now for several years, and um, I, that's how I actually I first found out about Onsite through my friend Julie Forrester, who uh, told me about it, and then I learned about it, and I've gone to a fundraiser and. Oh my goodness, who's been to on-site? Who knows what I'm talking about? Who has experienced the healing power and the family and the community of on-site? Uh, let me know on here. So what does on-site offer, right? They offer a programming that is rooted in healing the deepest emotional wounds, right? They use multiple modalities, but what was used during the Living Centered program for me was experiential therapy and psychodrama. And oh my gosh, I've been in therapy on and off, you know, for, for decades. And um, I've only been to talk therapy. I've never done anything else. I did a little bit of EMDR, working on some trauma um, with in, in my childhood past, and it was okay. So experiential therapy is a form of therapy that encourages us to identify and address hidden or subconscious issues through experiences such as role playing, guided image, imagery, the use of props and, and all kinds of other activities. And I am telling you, it is hardcore to the heart, hard work. And then they use psychodrama. And that is like action work. You're working this out. You are actually um, using um, spontaneous, like you're, you're dramatizing this, um, role playing, dramatic self-presentation to investigating the pain, or I'm sorry, investigating and gaining insight into your lives, you know? And so you talk about role playing and when you're role playing, and I mean, like I, you choose people, right? Like you say, okay, you play m my mom, you play my dad, you play Jackson, Ella, or a, a hurt past 
you know, boyfriends or husbands or what have you. I'm telling you, it is unbelievable. I was in a room. There were 58 of us at on-site at, during the Living Centered program this week. And 58 of us. They broke us up into groups. My group had nine people in it. And then a facilitator, Mary B., who whew, she could, she knew how to poke the bear and get just enough out of you. So there were nine of us in this room, six days of three of treatment, and you're there. I mean, it's like 12 or 14 hours a day of, of treatment. And by day two, you are so enmeshed with this group of people. And those of you that have been there, if you believe me, hit your heart button. If I'm telling the truth here, you are so enmeshed with these people that you had no idea who they were before you walked in. And they are your group, your core group. And they have become like family. I mean, these are tight knit people now who know things about me that nobody knows that only maybe, maybe two of my closest friends actually know um, things that my friends don't even know. We know that much about each other. You have opened up, you have shared so much so fast trying to get your money's worth out of this program, which trust me, you do. It is un believable the bond that you have i mean forever forever we will now be on a different level playing field than uh, with anybody else that you've ever met honestly so anyway on site what they do they partner with the world's top therapists right that specialize in trauma codependency i found out so much about myself and how codependent i am for sure with my daughter um I mean, it was as part of my plan to find a codependency support group, a 12 step program here. And I don't know, I didn't know anything about codependency before I went in there. And I mean, I always kind of threw the word around, but yeah, I need to, I need to find a codependency support group, process addiction, stress, burnout, family of origin, trauma, shame, resiliency, Shame is huge. Shame is huge. Shame is a huge part of my story as well that, that I had to share. Um, all of these helping people overcome dysfunctional patterns and establish healthy relationships. That's what this program is founded on because we are so dysfunctional in our relationships. You know, when we lose who we are, we lose that inner child that maybe some of us never got a chance to be. I know I didn't. My parents got divorced very quickly. My mom told me I started pulling away when I was one year old from her. I, I don't know what the hell that means. One year old. How do you pull away at one year old? But anyway, you know, some of us never got to be a child. Some of us had, some of us were molested when we were children. Some of us had, were beaten up when we were children, had physical abuse or emotional abuse. I mean, all these things that, you know, pattern us for the rest of our lives and we carry that shame and those bag of rocks over our shoulders for all these years and all these decades and when you begin to unpack that and I hate that term because I think we overuse it too much but literally you are unpacking it one rock at a time in these rooms these rooms with these people with these dramas and doing this um, therapy it, it, it's fascinating so they specialize in trauma, codependency, shame, love addiction, family systems, healthy sexuality and intimacy, spiritual growth, relationships, stress, burnout, second stage recovery, process addictions, emotional growth. I mean, it's fascinating. If you haven't looked up their website, which I'll put the link up here. I don't have it up there right now, but it's onsite.com or onsiteworkshops.com. The Living Centered Program is the one that I was in. It is six days. And here's what happens when you go. You're nervous because I knew we turned our phones in on that first night and you don't get them back until 20 minutes before you leave, actually. You go there. You don't know a soul. I didn't know one person there, 58 of us. You walk in. You're all sitting in a room and... Um, they're so unbelievable and so welcoming everyone from the the people cleaning the rooms to the to the cooks to the to the hospitality team to the therapist i mean they know you're stressed you're not there for kicks and giggles i can tell you that you are not there just to you know spend money for 6 days with no phone no no internet no tv no nothing we missed the elections too which was really kind of cool actually um 
anyway, the Living Centered Program, you turn your phones in and the first night, you know, it's, they start right off. I mean, you start right off into work and then you, you're bunking with people that you don't know. We had beautiful, beautiful cabins. I had two, a gal from LA, a gal from Austin, Texas in there. And we, we gelled instantly. When you walk in, they tell you, you can't, you don't tell anyone who you are. How many of you hit your heart buttons if you identify your identity is what you do for a living? Hit your buttons. I had no idea how often I talk about what I do for a living. So the whole week, you can't tell anybody who you are, who you think you are, who, who you might be, what you do for a living. I was in there in my group. I had, you know, Grammy award winning uh, country music guy. I had a Wall Street investment banker. I had a medical doctor, psychiatrist in there. I had a painter. I, had, I mean, I had all kinds of people in there. You don't realize how much you associate with who you are. And then it was like, oh my gosh, by the time it was the end of the day, I mean, end of the six days, heck, I didn't give a rat's ass what anybody did. I just loved them for who they were. I mean, that, that in itself was fascinating. So the Living Centered Program, it is the core program there, right? As the name suggests, and I'm reading this off of their website, okay, because I did not want to botch this up. They are the real deal. This program is designed to help you bring your life back to center, right? Often life events, relationships, trauma, distorted or compulsive behavior, so alcoholism, sex addiction, drug addiction, things like that, in yourself or those that you love, along with depression, anxiety, codependency, or just the stresses of daily life can keep you from the peace and balance that you desire. That right there in a nutshell is what the Living Centered Program is all about. And when you start, it's based in experiential therapy, right? So six days, the foundation is experiential therapy, supplemented by education and action. And that action is that drama that you, that you play out. And it talks about, you know, the first days of the program, you just kind of get to know yourself. You get to re, be re, reintroduced with yourself, get recentered with yourself, and how you've become blocked from being all that you can be. Life will beat the living heck out of you people if you let it. And I'm 52 years old. I feel pretty centered. I feel, I do feel pretty, you know, I, I really do feel good. I didn't go in there with an, any addiction of any sort. But when you carry the shame over your shoulders that I have for decades over what happened to me as a child and, and some things I've done, it begins to rot and just, well, rot. There's nothing, I mean, you can't say it any, any better rot away at your inner sight and you know and you get 50 something years of carrying that so i was molested as a child uh, by a stepfather my very first stepfather i had two one was a child molester the other one beat the hell out of me in high school and nearly killed me and if it weren't for my band director dr joel pettigrew um you know i don't know if i'd be here today and um he, he was a saving grace and he was a safe spot for me. But those are two huge events in my life that, you know, set up a, a pattern of not trusting men. And, and then the anger of all of that, and then you carry that out with your children and you're angry with your child. And it's just this whole big, um, it just builds and builds and builds. And as you start to come uh, tease these things out like an onion, it's unbelievable the healing that you get and the freedom that you get to begin to live your life back to center and get yourself back to center and live the rest of your life not carrying around that shame. You know, I know those things weren't my fault. I was a little kid when I was molested. Um, it wasn't my fault at all. I was asleep in my room every night that it happened. So it was not something that I did. Although when I was 13 years old, my mother, my mother looked me square in the eye when I was 13. And she said, Danny, you caused me to lose the only man that I ever loved. And I have told that to maybe two or three people my entire life. And I shared that during this week and the emotions that come with that when you're in a supported, loved environment, are unbelievable how you start to heal and how you start to 
forgive. And, you know, again, if you don't forgive somebody, what is that like drinking poison? And that what they say, drinking poison. And I don't remember anyway, what, what the whole thing is. But anyway, um, these are all things that all of us have trauma in our life. All of us have things that have happened to us. And when you get back to the center and you start to peel out from the center out, then you start to see some true healing. Okay. The bulk of the program is spent reconnecting with yourself. And yes, it is. And that can include anything, um, right? Expressing your feelings, improving self-worth, identifying patterns of self-sabotage, identifying and working through blocks of intimacy in relationships with others and yourself. When you have things that happened, like happened to me, which there are people who had far worse things happening to them, it doesn't uh, affect your life the same though, whether you were raped, whether you were molested, whether you just, you know, whether you were beaten up emotionally, verbally, physically, it all begins to tear away at you and tear away at your center core. Uh, the ultimate goal is to reestablish congruence between your feelings, your values and your actions, right? They're all connected, your feelings, your values and your actions, right? And we want all of those lined up um, in, in perfect harmony. It gives you the opportunity to make sure the person that you intended to be is the person that you are. I mean, feeling, thinking and action become more balanced. And that's exactly, I'm telling you, what happened and the last day they spend reintroducing you, preparing you, attempting to prepare you for getting back into re-entry back into the real world. And I can tell you something, it's not easy. They give you an action plan. You were in a safe environment for six days where anything you said, it didn't matter. And I don't understand the whole psychology behind being able to bond that quickly with that many, well, not that many, it's nine people, it's eight other people so fast. I don't know what it is. I don't know how they do it, but you know, when you don't trust people as a rule or a lot of people don't, I'm pretty trusting, but, um, and you, you trust these eight people and those of you who've been, and I know several of you have, because I got messages from you and yes, yes, Denise, trauma equals anything, not nurturing. You are exactly right about that. Yes, Mary, drinking, poison and expecting the other person to die. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. So, okay. So they, th the last day, they kind of introduce you back into the world, tell you how they're going to help you reenter back things to do and all in order, because you can't explain what just happened the last six days. There's no way I can't tell you what happened. I can't share what happened with everybody else. I can't really tell you, um, uh, beautifully, what went on in there. And, and I know a lot of people who've been to onsite. I have a lot of patients who've gone to onsite and they have never been able to tell me really what happened other than, excuse me, I'm drinking, I'm drinking my immune tea uh, out of my new mug. And it says, trust the process on the back there. Um, there's no way to be able to tell, tell people what you just went through there. It's not, the Living Centered program is not designed to treat primary addiction, right? It is a self-improvement and self-worth program. It's not cheap. It's $5,100. I can tell you that right there for six days. And the price goes up in 2019. They do have some scholarship. They do. Insurance generally doesn't pay for it because it's not a treatment center and it's not a hospital. And they don't, they, they don't really align themselves up with any sort of specific treatment. It is expensive, and I know several of you have been um, and said it was was it changed your life, and it did mine. So I'm just working on. I know I came home that night, and I have a lot of things with my children. You know, I, so you you heard a little bit of my past, which was was quite a bit of um, trauma in it. And here's one thing that happened to me in my past, and you know, I'm, I'm able to say these things <clears throat> because I cried. I cried buckets of tears last week, more than I've ever known I could ever cry. I have never seen that kind of sobbing and wailing and it wasn't me, just me. There were other people. I mean, it's so I can, I can speak about it pretty calmly now what happened, but you know, when you go through what you went through as a child, if you were molested or you're physically beat up or you were blamed for your parents um, or your mother, 
not, not my dad. My dad didn't blame me for anything. Um, those things really do affect you. But what was really interesting to me, and I've said this for years, is that night, and I know many of you were molested because 70, 75% of all girls have some sort of uh, sexual trauma, whether it's a rape or fondling or what have you. And I know many of you had the same experience I did that the night that it happened, it was never mentioned again, ever. Not one time until all those years later when my mother looked me in the eye and said, you caused me to lose the only man I ever loved, Danny. And not one time, not did my dad, not my mom, not my grandparents who knew about it. Nobody said, Danny, we need to get you therapy. We need to get you help. Nothing. It was completely swept under the carpet. Now that's not unique. So I'm not blaming anybody. It's very common. And I learned during this program, it's way more common than it should be. And so I have been so um, um, uptight with my kids, especially as a single mom for 15 years, you know, and I have asked them multiple times, has anybody ever touched you? Have you ever been molested? Have you been raped? Because I treat women in my office who never told anybody that they were raped or that they were molested. And so I've had these tight ropes on my kids and th that's not good. So when I came home Thursday night, Ella and I went to eat dinner and I talked to her about a whole lot of things that I, you know, I was sorry and, and all. And Ella shared some things with me. It was a really great conversation. It's uh, not that I won't get angry ever again or all, but you know, I've taken a lot of anger out on those kids and said some things that I should have never said in frustration. And you can't take those words back. And I know we all say things like that. And everybody said, you know, oh yeah, we've all said things and, but it doesn't make it right. Right. So the goal of the living centered program is to get you back to center, get you back to your true authentic self and to trust that process, right? The process of healing. They offer many other programs there. They have uh, life after loss. Oh my gosh, guys, listen to this. This is a six day intensive, just like mine was. And this is for parents. Bereaved parents are 70% more likely to be diagnosed with a mental illness and are four times more likely to die within the first year of their child's passing. Bereaved parents are four times more likely to die within the first year of a child's passing. 95% of mothers will be hospitalized for severe depression after a child dies. 60% of fathers will be. Those are tragic. Those are tragic statistics. The, the life after loss program is for parents who've lost children. No matter how they passed away, it's for anybody who lost a child. And they've partnered with the Peacock Invitational and Onsite. And they've created just a, a whole healing experience to support parents during um, this extremely vulnerable time. And I know a good friend of mine lost her child a couple years ago um, to an overdose. And I was devastated for her. And I know she hasn't gotten the help really probably that, that she needs at all. So that's another program that they do. They do the Living Centered Program for Veterans. This is a new program for them. And oh my goodness. And happy Veterans Day or happy, yeah, it's Veterans Day. Today's Veterans Day? Yeah, today's Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day to every single one of you. Who, I think it's today, Jackson. Today's Veterans Day, November the 11th. Yes, it is. I know it is. Happy Veterans Day to every single one of you. But this program is phenomenal. Brand new program starts in January. It is specifically designed for veterans to help bring their life back to center, right? Veterans often experience trauma that can't be seen and is too great to bear alone. This is scary. Veterans leave there. They're going to leave there with more hope for the future, a greater sense of self, decreased PTSD or depression, and the ability to emotionally connect better with themselves and the people in their lives. 50% of veterans who serve overseas suffer from PTSD or depression, 50%. 22 veterans commit suicide every single day. 85% of the veterans who've attended this program say that they have found direction in their life. That's right. It's not brand new. They've done this before. 90% say that they no longer feel angry or emotionally numb. 
82, 82% felt that they had purpose and hope in the future. It's a six and a half day program, all right? And it is absolutely geared at changing those veterans' lives and helping them live in a world where they don't struggle so hard with PTSD and depression and suicide thoughts. Then they have individual intensives. So there were people there who were there for individual intensives, the same things, living centered, but they're doing it individually by themselves, privately. Then there's healing trauma. The trauma, um, it's, I think it's six days. I think it's six days. It may be four days dealing with the trauma in your life. And you know, I considered doing that, but I think I got out. I think I got out mine during this. Then those of you who knows Brene Brown, hit your heart buttons if you love Bre Brene Brown. Yes, Leslie, I love Onside as well. So I, I, if you've gone, Leslie, let me know what programs that you've gone through. Who loves Brene Brown? I love Br Brene Brown. She teaches on vulnerability and she teaches on shame and she just teaches on just open up. But they do a Daring Way workshop that is Brene Brown. You know, it's, it's with the same methodology that Brene Brown uses, right? It was developed to help people learn how to show up, be seen, and live brave. Yes, I would love to take that one. The primary focus is on developing shame resilience skills and developing a courage to practice and a courage practice that transforms the way we live, love, parent, and lead. Who doesn't want to live, love, parent, and lead better? I do. We've cre they've created a unique offering blending the daring way with on-site's proven experiential model for improving self-worth and esteem. I mean, how great is that? Then they do adventures. They have an on-site out in Montana where they do equine therapy in Montana, and that's a whole week-long program. And then they also have one that's whitewater rafting. So all of these, those are part of their living centered programs. Part of that group living better. Then they have coupleship programs. So somebody that was in my, in my group, he and his wife had actually just done a couple intensive, uh, private intensive in September. And then he came back to do the living centered in November. The coupleship is four and a half days. And it again, helps couples learn and get those essential skills for creating and maintaining a healthy relationship. I mean, I was married for 11 years, so I know how difficult it is. And you don't have to be married. You can be in a committed relationship with somebody. You know, I know how hard it is to share feelings, to get your intimacy back. I sit and listen to women every single day tell me they don't have a sex drive anymore. And they're, they've just grown this far away, right, from their, from their spouse or from their partner. Um, you know, and I'm a big believer. It's your God, your spouse, and your children in that order right there. And sometimes you need some help getting this stuff back on track, right? God, spouse, children, God, spouse, children. We talked about this actually in, um, in my group this week. Share feelings, renew intimacy, enhance overall communication, right? When you can't communicate, you don't have a relationship. Commitment, forgiveness, and joy, right? Forgiveness is huge. How many times do we keep bringing up in relationships what happened? Something that happened. Yeah, but, yeah, but. Mm -mm. It's not fair. So this is, that apparently is a fantastic uh, uh, workshop that they do. And it, they talk about how the past affect your current relationships, your sexuality and your intimacy. They talk about managing conflict, blocks that keep relationships from growing, negotiating and romance responsibilities. That's a big program right there. Then they do, that's the coupleship program. And then they do a couples intensive, which is the very same as that one, but it's done in private. But I'm going to tell you something, people, there is something about community and people heal when they have community. I could have done this private. I could have done this by myself, but it would not have, I would not have had the support and the love and the community alone that I had last week. And there's just something about bearing your soul and telling your past and telling your struggles and your heartaches and things you wish that were different in your life and all that you begin to heal when you've got people to lift you up. I've said it for years. People heal 
when they have community and it's true. Then they do family intensive. Now that's four and a half days as well, I think. And that's working on your family, right? It addresses ways of developing boundaries, expressing family feelings and all those things. So that's a family group. Then they have healing love addiction, right? That's a four and a half day program. It provides nurturing environment for building self-worth. Um, the healing love addiction program allows you to address core wounds, driving self-sabotaging behaviors and the need for external validation and approval. Now that's pretty interesting. I really hadn't thought a lot about love addiction. I don't feel like I'm a love addict, but it says, um, what were our needs for nurture and support? Were our needs for nurture and support met while we were growing up? Uh, no, not on this end. I don't know about you. So it says they explore what happens if we don't get those needs met and how that impacts our adult life relationship patterns. When we don't get our emotional needs met, we start to look at other relationships to fill those needs. Oh, good Lord. That's the healing love addiction program. <laughs> Crap. Maybe I need to be there too. When you don't have those needs met, it affects your self-worth, your self-esteem. We learn to hide or protect our true self and our feelings. And we become inauthentic and often medicate the pain that causes those things. So you can medicate it with drugs. You can medicate it with food. You can medicate it with alcohol. You can medicate it with you know, love addictions says you're going to work on an emotional level to restore your true worth with healthy validation and support. It provides the tools to work through issues to help create a healthy self care plan moving forward. I mean, who the heck doesn't need that? Then they have a healthy love and relationships workshop. That's four and a half days. And every bit of this is on their website guys. So you can go through that. That's basically the same thing, but it gets, you know, a whole lot, whole lot deeper. Then there's healthy sexuality and intimacy. And this one is just for males. I find this interesting. That's six and a half days. That's longer than the one I was in. It helps the males address sexual addiction and compulsion. And they start to explore their personal issues that fuel the sexual issues, such as family of origin, historic shame, grief, loss, denial, coexisting dependencies, trauma, destructive behavior, all those things. And so again, you begin to work coming back to the center. That's all at the on-site campus. And then right next door to that is Milestones. Milestones is um, action treatment center. Uh, well, I say treatment. I'm not sure if it's treatment, but it's they have 30, 60, and 90 day programs there. I was there at, at onsite with a woman whose son was actually in a 90 day program down at, at onsite. I mean, I'm sorry, at Milestones. They treat trauma, they treat abandonment, they treat environmental trauma, bullying, childhood sexual abuse, financial trauma, grief and loss, growing up with addiction, illness trauma, infidelity and betrayal trauma. I mean, it goes on and on, combat trauma, natural disaster trauma, rape, related trauma, um, suicide trauma, all those things. I'm telling you, I, I am a huge fan of Onsite now. I've known about Onsite for a long time, but I am telling you the work that they're doing there, helping individuals one at a time create better humans for this world. If you and I, would have had a place like on-site to go to when we were 20 years old. There is no telling what we could have prevented 20 to 50, 33 years of dysfunction and um, dysfunction, you know, maybe could have been stopped or, um, you know, halted a little bit had we been able to get the help that we needed as kids or as young adults. I want to tell you, I was in there with, there was probably a 20 something year old in this, in this group. And then I was in there with two guys, three guys, three young men, one 28, the other one third in their 30, 31 in my community with kids in my group who were doing the hard work. And I mean the hard work. And these are people very, well known in their field. Um, and I said to them, I said, I have such a renewed faith for your generation and for men in your generation who are coming in here, showing up, 
bearing your soul, breaking down, like, I mean, just breaking down to the core um, their feelings and what an amazing gift they're giving to their children, to their male children, to their female children, to see that dad can be vulnerable, right? Dad can deal with his past and the drama and he's not going to bring that forward in raising me and completely screw me up in the process because he's so messed up, not dealing with his past childhood trauma. I'm telling you, it renewed my faith in men like you've never seen. And so there's that young group that was there with all these little kids. And then there were this, there was a guy there that was 70 something years old. There was a woman there who was 74 years old who was doing the hard work because however many years she has left in her life, she wants to live them her best, true, authentic self. I mean, I'm telling you, it was, it was mind blowing to me. And the moms and the single moms that were there who feel so guilty about everything that we've had to go through and the stress that we've had on our shoulders trying to feed our kids and not be, you know, angry moms and, and trying to stay present and focused and raise them while we're trying to work and we're trying to pay the bills and we're trying to get this done and go through school or what have you while we're on food stamps. I'm telling you, I was impressed and one soul at a time. I tried to get Miles on here tonight when I found out Dr. Motley wasn't going to be here, but Miles is out of town. But um, here's what he said to me when he texted me. He said, the world is better when we all work on becoming a better version of ourselves. On site is a piece of the healing puzzle. I wrote that. He didn't. Our mission is to change lives through enhanced emotional health. And I am telling you right now, they are on target for that. One human being at a time. They are changing lives by enhancing emotional health. One person at a time, one family at a time. I'm telling you, if I had $100,000, I would hand out $5,100. And that's how much this program is to every single person that I know and say, you're going to onsite compliments of me. One guy who is in our community, who is, uh, who is in my group, who is, um, we'll all watch him on the CMA awards, uh, Wednesday night. He has sent multiple family members and, um, uh, people in his band and all of that. And, and he can, he financially can do that. And he, uh, he's one of the ones who's a young guy who I am so impressed with, Right before we left that day, it, it was just our group and we were closing. And he said, I want to pray for all of us. And he prayed the most unbelievable heartfelt prayer for us to lift us up and send us back out in this world as better people. And I'm telling you, I, I don't have anything to do with on site. I have nothing. I've gone to their fundraiser before. I've done things with them, but I don't have anything to do with them. I don't get paid by on site. But I'm going to tell you something. It's not often that I find something that I think changes people from the core and it is on site. And if you have the opportunity at all to go, if you financially can swing it, then then I would highly recommend it. And I would go first alone because I, I'm just a believer that if you don't fix yourself first, you can't get the relationship fixed, the couple fixed, you can't get the kids fixed, et cetera. You have to work on yourself and do the hard work first. And that's hard because it's pulling layers one at a time. And when I really dug deep, because what they did in my group is you go back to that original trauma in your life, whatever you think that is, the original trauma. And I know what my original trauma, the, the one that I remember, the original trauma was, you know, being molested. That was the original trauma. I don't remember. I don't know if I was raped. I don't know. Um, but I remember that and I remember it well. And I remember what happened that night and what went forward. And that I think for me was the original trauma. And I worked then from that trauma out and then everything that happened from that trauma. And if you start really breaking these things down, it's very evident what's going on with us or why we act the way we do or why we don't do things. So, I love it. I love on site. I can't wait to read. Um, yes, Adam, we have to work on our own heart first. That's true. 
but I would love, and I am going to save my money, and I am going to try, and I talked to Ella about it. Jackson just actually got home a little bit ago, but I would love to send both our, my, myself and my kids and do a family intensive there for three or four days and really work on the damage that I've done with my kids before I send them out into this world on their own officially, they're 21 and 22, but you know, they they need to have some help as well because they themselves have been traumatized by myself and their dad and a divorce and things like that. So I'm just a big believer that we've got to start, start at home first, start here. Um, Barbara, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, I tell you, I, um, this is going to be short tonight, but, um, I, I appreciate you all listening. That was not hard. That was not easy. I was a nervous wreck before I started on here, but, um, I think if you're not authentic and if you don't tell your story and if you don't tell the truth, how can you help other people? So I'm a little nervous about going back to work tomorrow. I am. I have a full day tomorrow and it makes me nervous. It'll be interesting to see how it changes me as a nurse practitioner, as a listener. It, you can't help but come out of there changed and they don't let you not do the hard work. That's the interesting thing. That's what I kept saying to Mary. We had a 74 year old therapist, which was hard for me because my mom is 74. And for those of you that know the story, um, my mom was diagnosed with dementia recently, a couple of years ago. And um, so I started to try to talk to these things with her a, a year ago and it did not go over well at all. But I just sat and looked at Mary every single day this week thinking you're 74 years old and you are, um, you are so sharp and on top of it and she knows what to do. And it was a little sad because she's the exact same age as my mom, but she was also like the mom aunt, quite frankly and quite honestly, and just the hard truth, the mom that I never had, the one who was safe, the one who was protecting me in there as I was on the floor in a puddle and the one who knew when to push, the one who knew when to back off. And that's what a parent should be. I think a parent should be safe. And when you don't get that safety as a child, I'm blessed. I had two routes to take, right? I could have gone off down a completely different road, but I am stubborn and I am determined. And I was determined to do something with my life, whether I was told you do everything half-ass, which was another one of the things I grew up with hearing constantly. Um, I could have chosen to do everything half-ass my entire life, or I chose to go the other direction, which is not so healthy. Keep going to school, keep going to school, keep trying to prove yourself. So at 52 and three quarters year old, I am hoping to bring it back to center now and see what happens the next 52 two years. I think I'm going to be a better nurse practitioner. I'm going to be a better mother. I'm going to be a better girlfriend. I'm going to just be better all the way around. And whether, or, and, and I forgive everything that, you know, all the trauma in my past, because again, what good's it going to do to keep carrying it? So I am letting it go. I let it go last week and it is gone no matter what happens. So unfortunately, I probably won't ever be able to address my mom the way I want to about it, but that's okay. So that being said, guys, I love you guys. And um, I just want you to know that I found a great safety net last week. I already have a good group of people in my life, but this was a community that, that um, we are forever bonded by those six days. And those of you that have been, and I see there's a lot of people here um, who've been. Yes, Denise, take care of yourself. Uh, um, absolutely. Put the oxygen mask on. I tell patients that every day before um, there's a reason you put the oxygen mask on first. But what you said on here, Denise, what they say is that going to those six days of onsite is about a year or a year and a half of therapy. Because when you really think about it, if you pay $150 a week or however, you've spent about 12 hours a day in therapy there, it's about a year's worth of therapy. And I believe that because I'm going to tell you, I sat and did talk therapy for years trying to talk through this stuff. And I really, I mean, I walk out and say, yeah. I will find a therapist now who does experiential therapy because I think that's exactly what I need. I need action. I need 
physical. I mean, pounding on stuff. Man, it, it was great. I've never done anything like that in my life. All right, guys. If you guys need to sign off, go ahead. I'm just going to talk a little bit about this Friday night is our addiction to benzodiazepine uh, workshop or lunch and learn at the office. I've only had like three people sign up for it. I do realize that this is a problem that a lot of people have shame over. Do not be ashamed. If you have an addiction to Valium, Xanax, Clonopin, Librium, Ambien, Ativan, what else am I? The benzos, I forget. Um, show up. Or if somebody you know has an addiction or is trying to come off of them. I mean, I'm not going to have exact protocols because everybody's protocol is different. But I have a patient who was who's watching tonight, actually, who's going to be leading that with me, that we worked three years to get her off of Xanax and got her down to 0.25 milligrams and couldn't do it. I couldn't take it home. I could not get her off of it completely. And she, she her story of healing and going to um, Cumberland Heights to get off of Xanax is empowering. And I want you to know that you can get off of them if you if you desire to. And so she's going to share a story. That is a Friday night, 630 at the office. November 30th in two weeks or three weeks is the Hashimoto's Christmas party. Dr. Justin Deering is going to be our guest speaker. He's a functional neurologist chiropractor and I'm telling you is one smart man. I love surrounding myself with people that are smarter than me and he is the real deal. He has been the only person who has helped my vertigo which just came on two months ago, but it has been terrible. And within one visit, it was about 80% better. So that is November 30th. Put it on your calendar, 630 at Nashville Restorative Dentistry, which is Dr. Um, Ryan Jones's office. And then this last Friday night, Mary's on here right now, Mary Chubinko. We had a crunchy um, living toxic, living toxin free in a toxic world workshop at the office Friday night, the day after I got back from on site. And it was amazing. We sold so much crunchy makeup that we had to start a whole new link to it. We are 10% of the sales of this party that we did go to helping a mom who is um, struggling with a child going through cancer therapy to make her feel pretty. She's going to get the crunchy product line. If you don't know about crunchy, C-R-U-N-C-H-I makeup, let me tell you, you are missing out. And they do, they're do they getting into skincare as well now. Um, um, that product line, and I used to sell Beauty Counter. It puts Beauty Counter to shame on how clean it is. And you can't tell now, but I have their foundation on. I barely have anything on. I've stressed all afternoon. Um, yeah, the, uh, Mary just put the link up. If you're interested in checking out crunchy or this party, or purchasing something, go ahead. Um, I was thrilled. We had a great workshop on living toxin free in a toxic world. We talked all about skincare, but then we talked about deodorant and shampoo and conditioner and uh, you know tampons, my favorite thing that I've talked about lately. And we also ha now have the new dot cup, the menstrual cup. It's in the office. I sold my first one on Friday night, and they're thirty-two dollars. They work for you can use them for ten years. Think about that. It's a lot cheaper than buying tampons. All right. We got a big metagenic sale at the office because I have got two, I've got 10 products coming in that I'm private labeling through metagenics. And so we're clearing out the ones that don't have the private labels on them and the private labels come in tomorrow or Tuesday. So 15% off those top 10 that we have in the office come in. All right, guys, I love you guys. And um, thanks for being a safe place for me to be vulnerable. I think that again, you heal when you're able to um, speak your wounds and speak your drama. And I know that tomorrow morning going back to work, I'm going to be um, a different person and maybe a little more reserved than normal, just as you try to process things. And those of you that have been to onsite know, but just know that you're worthy to be well, you're worthy to be whole, you're worthy for your story to be told and you're not, your drama. You're not your trauma. You're not your abuse. You know, you are an unbelievable man or woman of the most high king over here. And you don't have to live in shame. You don't have to walk in regret. You don't have to um, live in addiction. 
you don't have to live anything less than the amazing person that you are. In fact, I bought this card that I'm going to frame and it says, you are capable of wild and extraordinary things. You are a supernova of a human, a catalyst of awesome. You're a bustling community center, a work of art, a sublime cursive script, an old growth tree. You're a disruptor, mm -hmm. a creator, yep, and a choose your own adventurer. You're a liquor of ice cream, I used to be, an organizer of mischief, a double jump on the trampoline. You've got the force of a lightning bolt, a whole lot of magic. No one can invent, could have invented a better human than you. Believe it, it's true. All right, guys, next Sunday night, I'm gonna be back here alone. I don't know what I'm gonna be talking about. I'll figure it out. And then Thanksgiving Sunday, I hope Dr. Motley's gonna be back. So anyway, guys, I love you, appreciate you. Hope you learned a little bit about Onsite. It is a life, they are changing lives one at a time over there. And I am honored and I am thrilled to know Miles Adcox, who's the owner and the CEO of Onsite. And I know that my week there, it changed my life and I hope it changes the trajectory of my children's lives as well. Thank you guys, have a good night.